Hello class, our lesson for today is going to be on content management systems. A content management system is an application that is used to manage web content, allowing multiple contributors to edit and publish content. The content in a CMS is typically stored in a database and displayed in a presentation layer based on a set of templates. To put it in perspective, currently all of our content is stored in our HTML files. In a CMS, the content is stored on a database, giving us much more flexibility uh, when making changes and even managing different levels of access and to who gets to modify the content. Some of the most popular content management systems are WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal. We are going to be focusing on WordPress since it is the most popular content management system today powering about 35% of all websites online and has about 60% of the CMS market. WordPress originally started as a blogging software, but has certainly come a long way since it was first launched in 2003. WordPress is built on PHP and MySQL, and it is licensed under the general public license, which means it is free to use and to be modified by anyone. Even though we are only going to focus on WordPress, through your web server, you have access to the other content management systems and many other software. I highly encourage you to explore them and maybe even install them on your own time as they all have great benefits and strengths. Let's take a look at how to install WordPress on our server. We will be installing WordPress manually, but WordPress is so common these days that most hosting providers have a one-click install option. For your server, if you scroll down to software and if you go to quick install you have an option to install WordPress or Drupal or install Joomla and many other softwares with just one click install WordPress button and then you simply pick the domain that you want to install it on and the install path pick your admin email all that stuff and bam one click and WordPress is installed. The other option on the server is if you go over to Softaculous app installer if you click on that again you have all these scripts and programs content management systems blogs uh, forums galleries wikis that you could install one click right so you click WordPress install and then it you select your title, your domain, your directory, and you go ahead and install WordPress. Now, the reason why we are not going to use the one-click installs and install WordPress manually is because anyone can install WordPress, but not everyone can troubleshoot it. I always have a ton of developers that reach out to me because they are stuck. They don't know how to do very simple things like migrate a WordPress website, fix a broken plugin, or just basic troubleshooting. I'm 100% certain that in your careers you will, you will have to work or troubleshoot a WordPress website. So again, it is very important that you know how the files and the database work. So we're gonna be doing installing WordPress manually. So to do that, we first have to go over and download WordPress. Now, a lot of people get confused between WordPress.com and WordPress.org. So it, WordPress does have two platforms. One is a hosted solution, that is WordPress.com. So if we go to WordPress.com, you get the WordPress.com website where this is where a lot of bloggers kind of just start their websites and it's a hosted solution and you pay for it and it has limited features depending on the plan that you sign up for um, so their smallest plan doesn't give you much access and I think once you get to the business plan uh, you're able to install custom plugins which are really helpful so don't get them confused wordpress.com again is it's kind of like their public um, hosted solution we are going to be going to wordpress.org and you're gonna get this page and on the top right hand corner there's gonna be a get WordPress 
blue button. We're going to click on that and we are going to go ahead and hit download WordPress, which in this case they're in version 5.4. We're going to go ahead and save this file. And we could go over, actually, I'm going to close that file. And if you guys get stuck or need a little bit more detail than the video, you could always see this installation, this handy guide here, which tells you how to install WordPress as well. So once your file is downloaded, right, so we have WordPress 5.4 here. It's going to be in a zipped file, so we're going to want to extract it. So make sure you extract the file. So once the files are extracted, we're going to get this WordPress folder, right? So once we have that, we're just going to leave that there for a little bit. We're going to go ahead and we are manually going to create a database. So we're going to go and you guys already know how to create a database. We've covered it before. We're going to go to MySQL databases under databases. And we already have our Fluence is the S data database and we're going to create a new one. Now in this case, I'm going to call it CMS. And I said, go ahead, create database. The database Fluence CMS is created. I'm going to go back. And like usual, we have the database created. And now we need to add a user. And like we mentioned before, we try to keep them the same. So I'm going to call my username the same as a database. And I give it a password. and we've create the user once the user is created we add the user to the database so we add user fluence cms to database fluence web cms we hit add we allow all privileges and we make those changes so since the cms requires a database we create a database for it. Now let's take a look at our folder structure by going to File Manager. We go to Public HTML. Now typically I would install WordPress on the Public HTML folder directly. But since we are using this to store a lot of different projects and a lot of different assignments, I don't want the files to get lost or confused. So we're going to create a new directory for this uh, WordPress installation. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new folder. And I'm actually going to call it CMS for Content Management System. All right, so we have this new folder. Once you have your CMS folder created, we are going to now go ahead and open FileZilla and connect to our server. I'm already connected to my server and you guys can see the CMS folder here. That's the new folder I just created. We're going to go ahead and open up that folder to make sure we are uploading inside of that folder. On the left hand side we're going to find our downloaded WordPress folder and we're going to make sure we select the extracted version of that folder. Make sure you don't upload the zip version or it won't be able to read those files inside there and also make sure you don't upload the actual WordPress folder inside the CMS folder because if you do your directory is actually going to be your domain name forward slash CMS forward slash WordPress so you want to make sure you open up the WordPress folder and we're gonna upload the contents of the WordPress folder so WP admin WP content, WP includes, and the rest of the files. So I'm going to select all these files, select all, or control A. And we're going to upload the contents into the CMS folder. So I have my CMS folder open on the right side. And 
on the left side, I'm going to go ahead and upload those. Perfect. So all files have been transferred successfully. Uh, make sure that you also check these failed transfers. Make sure you don't have any files in there that were missed. So we have all our WordPress files uploaded to our server. And finally, we're going to go over to our domain name. So in my case, it's fluenceweb.com. And we're going to put in our directory, which we created, which in this case was CMS. Hit enter. And we get the install screen for WordPress. So you get to select language. We're going to select English. Hit continue. And it, we get the welcome screen. Welcome to WordPress. Before getting started, we need some information on the database. You will need to know the following before proceeding. So database name, username, password, and host, and the table prefix if we run more than one database. And ideally, you could create this file um, on your own. They do have a WordPress config sample, but I just have it WordPress do it for me. And we hit let's go. So database name database username and to find this information we have experience with this as already we're going to go to our MySQL databases in cPanel so I'm just going to copy it over to make sure there's no mistakes so my database name is going to be fluence w underscore cms my user main username is going to be the same my password we're going to go with my simple password tiger15 it, fill in the, it filled in the uh, local host and the table prefix, uh, it already filled it in as well. And WP works just fine. After that, we're going to hit submit. And then we are going to hit run the installation. And that's it. We're done. Now we just need a site title. I am going to call this Fluence Web as well. And they're going to create a username and a password. Make sure you don't forget this password. And I'm going to change this password later. Um, so I'm just going to confirm to use a weak password. And then we're going to put in an email. And we could discourage search engines from um, indexing this site for now as it's just for us to play with and learn. Lastly, we're going to hit install WordPress. And that's it. We're done. We're going to hit login. So to log into WordPress, it's always going to be wp-login or wp-admin and it takes you to this login screen and all we have to do once we're there is simply go ahead and log in so my username and my password and we are logged into WordPress